Welcome to the next section of our course, Automation Framework Development with Playwright in c .net. And in this section, we'll be talking about database testing in Playwright. So how do we do database testing with Playwright? Does Playwright support any inbuilt database testing feature? Well, the answer is no. Playwright does not support any database testing by itself, but we can do effective database testing with a framework that we have already built in this course. So it is very crucial to do effective database testing. Because as you know, our application is a UI based application. It also has a database, which is the place where all the data live. And again, the question to do how effective database testing can be done is going to be changing based on the person that you are asking. Because every person do database testing in their own way. There are many different ways available and some of the way that you can go with is testing the database manually or using SQL profiler or SQL trace log that you can take in to do database testing effectively or you can test the database from the API itself. I mean, API is gonna be the close relative of the database where all the data can be accessed and processed and then sent to the caller API or caller UI of the application. So you can just test the API of the application and then you can ensure that the database is working fine or not. Or you can test the database straight from the code itself. And I'm not going to go into the way of testing the database from the code because it involves the SQL code or it also involves the C-sharp code. But there is another better way of doing the database testing is using the code but via an ORM or otherwise called as object relational mapping. So what is this ORM? Well, object relational mapping or ORM in computer science is a programming technique for converting data between incompatible type systems using object-oriented programming language. This creates, in effect, a virtual object database that can be used from within the programming language. So basically, it's gonna act like a barrier or a proxy between your code and the database of your application, where it is gonna create its own virtual database, like an object database, that you can use to query and then do all the CRUD operation that you wanted to do within your application from the code itself. That is the real power of this ORM. And that's what we are gonna be using to make an effective database testing. Well, as that said, you may ask like, what is the tool that we can use to perform an ORM for doing an effective database testing within our Playwright? Well, we are gonna be using what is called as an entity framework as an ORM for our testing. Well, entity framework is an open source ORM framework for .NET application supported by Microsoft. It enables developers to work with data using objects of domain specific classes without focusing on the underlying database tables and column where the data is stored. Well, if you ask me if entity framework is related to testing or is it a plugin that is available for Playwright? Well, no. EF or entity framework is actually part of the Microsoft's whole .NET suite and you can see this entity framework being used within the application, not within the test code. But you can use the potential of entity framework within the test code so that you can access the database pretty much like how you can access the database like how application does. And that is the whole idea of how we are gonna be using EF or entity framework to access the database from within our test code so that we can do all the CRUD operation within the test code itself. And that is the whole idea of how we can use this EF as an ORM within our test code. Well, as that said, the question of how we can add the entity framework within our test code, there are many different ways that you can do it. You can either add the whole reference of the entity framework library within your test code, or you can just refer to the application under test project within your test code so that you can get the entire reference of entity framework. That is the first thing that you can do effectively within your test code. And then we also need to access the DB context so that we can access the database pretty much like how the application does. And then we can call the repository parent code within our test code so that we can access the entire operation that we wanted to do. I know the DB context or the repository pattern seems to be a bit newer because we have not get into that because as we are just building the test framework, not the application code. 
I'm not going to be talking about this in this particular slide, but starting our next lecture, I will just get into the applications code and I will show you how the DB context is going to talk with the database and also how the repository pattern is actually calling the database to perform the CRUD operation. You will then know how easy it is that you can use the same operation within your test code so that you can achieve the same in much easier fashion within the test code to perform the CRUD operation. And you don't really have to rely on any SQL query to perform those operations because everything can be done using these two as you can see over here. I know it sounds like a bit of a new alien that you wanted to learn right now. That's the reason why I think that you need to have a prerequisite knowledge before we get into this particular section. It is highly recommended that you have to have some basic understanding of the ND framework, like how it works and how to perform basic CRUD operation with any framework. So if you have got those ideas in place, then you can actually leverage the things that we are going to be talking. But don't worry, we are going to get into those details in our next lecture, like how you can see the Nnetty framework is being used within your application under test, and then how you can use them effectively within your test code as well. And that way it will give you more idea of how that we can effectively use this Nnetty framework. So meet you in the next lecture, where we'll be talking about how we can use Nnetty framework within our test code to perform the database testing operation. All right, so now that we have got the idea of how the entity framework is baked into the product API using the uh, repository patterns to access the data and the DB context to access the data from within the database. And we also understood how the application is built using the three tier architecture over here. So now the quest is how we're gonna be accessing the database of the application using the playwright test itself. Well, in order to achieve that, we need to connect both the application DB context and the test DB context in a same manner like how it's done in the application side. So they, they should match each other. And both the application and test code should point to the same database. Because if you try to create a separate DB context within your test code, it is not going to be having all the data that you are seeing over here in the product DB. So you need to point to this database so that you can try to connect it and then start performing those operations. That is what is the quest that we are going to be doing in order to access the data from this particular product.db, which is running over here. So let's see how we can achieve this operation. So in order to do that, I'm going to close all these tabs, which is open and it's confusing. And I'm going to go to the EA spec flow test project that we have got over here. And if I go to the product feature or product dot feature, you will see that we have got a a step definition over here it says that uh, given i ensure headphone data is cleaned up if already exist so where is this uh, implementation of this step really exist so if we go to the reusable steps.cs file you will notice that we have got over here public async task given i ensure data is cleaned up if already exist and they have got the product name that i have passed in so if you have got a product with the same name then we call the delete async method. This is exactly the same thing that we have discussed within our application while we were discussing about REST API testing with Playwright over here. We, we saw how we can implement the delete operation in the spec flow BDD scenario. That's exactly where we actually implemented this particular code as you remember. And now we are gonna see how we can get rid of the API operation with the database operation. So basically we are not going to call the API this time, rather we are going to call the database itself straight away so that we can perform those operations. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to just go to this particular step definition once again over here. And instead of doing it with the API, I'm just going to comment this particular code we are gonna use the database to delete the data from the app. So how do we actually do that? So in order to do that, we have to do some series of operation. As I told you, the first thing which we need to do is we need to connect to the database. So that's the first thing that we need to do. So connect to DB. The second thing that we need to do is uh, we need to delete, uh, delete the database data from the database, right? But connection of the database does require certain operation to be done within our test code. So the first thing is we need to connect to the 
applications database. So how do we actually do that? Well, you will notice that our application database is not a SQL Server database so that you can directly connect it with the connection string. You actually need to connect to this particular product DB file. Basically, it is a static file which exists within the within the directory of the product API. So if you just go to this particular project over here, open the folder in the file explorer, you'll notice that the product.db file or the database file exists in this particular product API folder. So this is the place that we have to get the data from. So how do we actually get the data from this particular uh, product API? Well, in order to do that, we first of all need to either give it like a hard-coded path, which is not ideal most of the time. Rather, we should get the absolute path to uh, get to this particular point and then get the database or connected to that. That's where the connection string of this product DB is going to be. Because you know that within the product API, the connection string was quite straightforward because we just gave data source is equal to product DB. That's why it is always creating into the root directory of uh, this particular product API project. But now we can't give the database connection string as the product DB straight away because we don't have that in this particular folder. So we just have to connect to this particular folder so that we can work out with that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go to this startup file uh, over here of my application test. And now I'm gonna make a series of change this time. So the first change to connect to the database is we need to know what DB context that we are connecting with. And once again, if you just go to the EA Specflow project over here, we have not connected this particular project to the API project as you can see over here. You see that we don't have the project reference to the product API project. We have to do this this time because now we are going to communicate with this particular product API to perform the database operation. As I told you, you can use Entity Framework straight away within your own project, or you can refer to the application under test to perform that operation. And I will say, just refer your product API because within this product API, you already have got the Entity Framework in it. So if you refer the product API project, so you are essentially referring the Entity Framework as well. So let's see how we can do that. So go to the dependencies, add the project reference, and just add the product API project over here. See, now we have added the reference for this particular project. And once we have that, we can start performing the operation over here. So what I mean about the operation. So the first thing is I'm going to use the services. So if you just go to the program file over here, of the uh, product API, you will notice that in order to connect to the product DB context, I use this particular code, right? I'm gonna use the exact same code even this time within my test code. So I'm just gonna go copy paste this code over here. See that this code is quite legal as well because it just works fine even in this particular context. And don't worry about the configuration get connection string over here because we are not going to use the configurations uh, connection string over here. Rather, we are going to use the connection string. As I told you, we need to give the connection string as the path product.db from the product API folder. So that's when the connection string is going to be coming up. So var connection string is going to be uh, so just go back to this particular app setting. So it's going to be data source is equal to product DB, but not that really. Rather, we need to get the path of the product DB. So this product DB is sitting in, a, in the product API folder really. So we can't use this connection string straight away, but I'm just going to put that for now. We will replace this particular code in our next lecture. But for now, I'm just going to add that over here. So once we have this, we are next going to perform one more most important operation within this particular code, which is accessing the data from this particular database. So how do we access the data? As I told you in our last lecture, we are gonna be using the repository pattern of the entity framework to do that. 
and the repository pattern we have implemented in the product repository.cs file over here. So we need to call this particular product repository. So if you remember in our earlier lectures of this particular course, we have discussed how we access the repository or any other class within the dependency injection. We use its interface, right? So in order to access the product repository, we can call the interface itself straight away. So what does that really mean? So we can just go over here and we're going to say dot add transient. I'm just going to add transient this time because we just have to call one time. And I'm going to say I product repository. If it is a product repository that I'm calling in, then call the product repository for me. Something like this. So this is the way that I add the dependency injection for the product repository. That's all. That's the only thing that I have to do. Once I do that, now we are pretty good to go by using this particular product repository within our test code and start using it. So I'm not gonna do it in this lecture. I'm just gonna give some time for you to digest all this information that we have discussed so far. But yes, this is the way that we can connect to the database and then we can start querying using the product repository. So we'll see how we can use this product repository to access the data from the reusable steps that we have written over here. But even before that, we also need to connect to this particular product DB in this particular startup file because our connection string is wrong. So we'll first try to fix the connection string problem and following that, we'll try to use the product repository to get the database data connectivity out from it.